Hello guys, welcome back to another Neo2 build video. This one will be a little bit shorter than usual as this is a personal build that I'm uploading as a follow on from my advanced combat techniques tutorial that focused around sword and dual swords. So a little disclaimer, because of that this build isn't a crazy one shot build so if you're new here and looking for something super cheesy I recommend you check out my other builds as some of those are more suited to that kind of thing. That said I always try to place emphasis on the main weapons and the combat as this build is going to be more for that kind of player that simply enjoys the combat in regard to the sword play and all of the sort of mechanics that go along with that specifically around sword and dual swords so if you haven't seen the advanced combat tips video i do recommend you do that if you want to run a build like this so moving on to the build it is a pure hybrid build between sword and dual swords making use of both the master swordsman sets and their respective weapons so we have the bamboo cutter and bone feaster dual swords alongside the bison kagiyasu sword we then have three pieces of the sword variant of master swordsman for five piece triumph of tranquility and two pieces of the dual sword variant for the four piece master swordsman power as you see with the five piece triumph of tranquility we're getting key recovery melee damage increased attack and defense with sword key pulse recovery and active skill damage with the master swordsman power four piece we're getting life increase active skill key consumption reduction damage taken reduction and sign of the cross damage now it's important to note my sword variant pieces are placed in the chest, gloves and waist slot. This is because they are light armour so having them in the chest and waist pieces is going to lower the weight capacity meaning it's more efficient when going for A agility requiring less points in stamina. The reason we have them in the glove slot is so that we can roll EI quick draw damage onto the gloves without the need for another inheritable. For our accessories we of course need a Yasakani Megatama and I'm also running a Toshi's Abacus because this is a highly mobile build and being able to zip between any during an extended mission is invaluable to me. 
Um, fun fact, I deleted this accessory by accident before making this video, so one of the reasons it's taken a couple more days to get this out is because I had to spend two days farming another one, so always remember to lock your items after tempering. For my ranged weapons, I have Warrior of the West Bow for two-piece life increase. For the second ranged weapon, it's entirely optional, I run a Hino rifle, simply because I run it as a three-piece in other builds, so it's the most optimised second ranged weapon that I have. For the stats then, on my sword, I have low attack key consumption, because I'm using the quick attack in low stance very frequently with the sword for the evasion mechanics, life drain on melee attack, saturation accumulation, imbue water, gold inherited attack bonus based on heart and an inheritable of active skill key damage. For my dual swords, nearly identical to the sword, saturation accumulation, imbue water, melee attack key consumption, life drain on melee attack, gold inherited attack bonus based on heart and an inheritable of active skill key damage. For my ranged weapons, I prioritise damage bonus agility and any modifier that increases both weapon speed and movement speed whilst aiming. For the headpiece, key increase, other realm resistance, life increase, defence, inherited EI quick draw damage and gold inherited attack increase. For the chest piece, defense increase, life recovery on Amrita absorption. This is very important, make sure you have this as well as on one of your accessories. Elemental damage taken. Damage taken at critical. This is another important one. I'd say life recovery on Amrita absorption and damage taken at critical are the most important natural roles for any chess piece on any build, especially if you use extraction talisman. We also have gold inherited attack and an inheritable of EI quick draw damage. On the gloves, natively rolled attack increase, defense, faster winded recovery, natively rolled EI quick draw damage. Remember light armor gloves can roll skill damage natively so make sure the gloves are the light armor variant if you want to save an inheritable. And gold inheritables of life increase and running speed which is of course optional. For the waste, running speed, defense, dodge key consumption, life increase, gold inherited attack increase and an inherited EI quick draw damage. For the legs, defense increase, dodge key consumption, running speed, tenacity, gold inherited attack increase and an inherited EI quick draw damage. So if you're wondering why we're stacking EI quick draw damage and nothing else, that's due to the silver lining of a negative situation. That being, at the time of this video, it's not possible to get sign of the cross damage inherited onto all of your armor. So by running a dual swords hybrid build alongside sword, you're not actually losing much by prioritizing EI quick draw damage. Don't forget we have a bonus 15% damage to sign of the cross via Master Swordsman's Power's 4P set bonus. We are also in the Honda Clan at max reputation, so our current skill damage is at 38%, not including the bonuses to Sign of the Cross and EI Quick Draw on top of it. 28% of that skill damage is coming from Honda, plus 10% from the Triumph of Tranquility 5P set bonus. So then 15% Sign of the Cross damage on top of that 38% skill damage, and also 48.9% EI Quick Draw damage on top of that 38% skill damage, not including further damage modifiers and active buffs, so it's a lot of skill damage. For our accessories, on the Toshi's Apicus, I have Saturation Accumulation, Life Increase, Other Realm Resistance, Elemental Damage Taken Reduction, and on our Yasakani Megatama, Key Increase, Water Damage, Life on Amrita Absorption, again this is the most important thing, and Saturation Accumulation. Regarding the water damage, this may be optional, the reason I'm running it is because I believe that the higher the water damage, the higher the accumulation effects of the status, however, I haven't seen any hard evidence for this, and if it's a case of it just increasing the water damage and not status application, then you can probably skip this roll as the water damage itself isn't a big deal. So now for the fun part, <laughs> we're not using Tengen, yay! <laughs> now I'm using the new Mizuchi, but for the reason you probably aren't expecting, I've seen a lot of people, including some fairly big content creators, calling the spirit trash, so I don't really know how they justify that, but let's take a look at it. Um, you've got animal bonus on guard, yeah, that's kind of meh. Animal bonus on water attack, I mean, okay, not really worth taking the spirit for that alone. Defense increase on Amrita absorption. Now, this is pretty good. On previous builds, I had an entire armor piece in the water buffalo helmet, I think it's called, which gave me the same feature as this. On dual swords, this stacks with your mystic art that offers a very good defensive barrier alongside life on Amrita absorption. So running an extraction talisman with this buff, life absorption rolls and dual swords means that in light armor you feel like you're in at least medium armor tempered with defense rolls. It's really good uh, if the build supports it. But even so, this isn't the reason I'm running this spirit, it's just one of the bonuses. So Amrita earned, that's okay. 
Saturation accumulation 20%, pretty nice, but again, not why I would choose the spirit. So the best thing here is the defense buff on Amrita Absorption. However, the main thing that I haven't even seen a single person talk about yet is the Guardian Spirit Attack with Guardian Spirit Talismans. Now, this thing is borderline broken. You know, it's better than the pre-nerf Snake Core. It will knock down human bosses, apply saturation in one go. It, you could be surrounded by 20 enemies, and if you manage to line them all up, you'll knock all of them down in a single use, allowing you to quick draw attack for them. This alone is enough incentive for me to run this spirit is absolutely fantastic so for my second spirit i tend to swap between two gyokuto for the dash key consumption as i'm dashing more than i am attacking with this build friendly reminder to once again check out the advanced combat mechanics tutorial if you haven't as i covered the play style of this build extensively in there the second spirit that you might want to consider is inner saseo which provides a little bit of damage mitigation if you get caught on the way in with your attacks and most of the time with this build or the way this build is meant to be played you're more likely to get hit mid attack than you are trying to avoid damage due to the a agility and high mobility skills with this weapon set of sword and dual swords. So a quick look at my stats, I am dual scaling my weapons with heart and strength so I have both of those maxed at 99. 66 points in stamina is the exact amount I need for A agility as evident by the 30% current encumbrance. 26 points in magic is enough for me to carry all of my desired spells, which we will go over shortly. Everything else you see is a requirement for my gear or guardian spirits. Please remember all of my armor is crafted, meaning that the set requirements are drastically reduced, so I highly recommend you obtain your gear through smithing text rather than loot. It's very easy now to get the smithing text for my armor just by farming the Winds of Ruin mission in the final region. A quick note on how to dual scale your weapons, head to the blacksmith, click remodel, select your weapon. You can see with the katana here it scales with heart, strength and skill. To dual scale it, I select one of the stats I want, so in this case heart, I press triangle on it, then move down to strength and press X on that. I now have dual scaled the weapon with both heart and strength. Keep in mind, you only want to do this if both stats are of equal number, i.e. 99 in both. If you were to only have heart at 99 and not strength, then you'd only want to scale your weapon with heart. For my jutsu then, most important things here are definitely extraction talisman. This is where I get all of my healing and the defense buff from, as well as guardian spirit talisman, which we talked about earlier. Everything else is optional, though I do always recommend carrying a single quick change scroll to throw on before major encounters. Now, usually I would show you what skills to prioritize in the weapon trees. However, as mentioned at the start of this video, this is a requested video based on a tutorial video that I put out. So this build aims to utilize every single possible skill within the trees for both weapons. So once again, sorry to keep emphasizing it, but I do highly recommend you watch the video if you want to get an idea of what skills I utilize and how. I will say that in the samurai tree, make sure you have all of your running water skills, key pulse and purify skills for each stance as well as flux, flux 2 and flash attack. Also make sure you have damage boost strength and heart, these will be what you attach to your EI quick draw on sign of the cross as well as whatever other skills you tend to prioritize the most. As mentioned earlier, we are of course using the Honda clan for the 28% increase to skill damage, also the 80% chance to have damage halved at full health is nothing to scoff at either. And that's pretty much the build guys, I will try to work on some more advanced tutorials and builds related to that if you guys want to see more of that stuff as well as more casual friendly builds moving forward however because we've covered quite a lot of those i might have to wait until the dlc arrives before i continue with that kind of thing i'm having a lot of fun focusing more on the actual combat of the game but running around and one-shotting bosses starts to get very boring after several hundred hours of playtime and this game has one of the best combat systems i've ever experienced so i'm sure you understand though do feel free to ask me anything in the comments or recommend anything in particular that you might want to see next as always you can catch me over on instagram for daily content and i should be back to twitch streaming very soon so you can follow us over there as well i did open up my discord and the link should be provided below if anyone needs help with trading hopefully we can get enough of you guys in there to help each other with that and if you like this video please hit the thumbs up as that really helps me out and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more neo2 content coming soon okay guys stay safe and take care